hi and welcome to my channel so healthcare is a very delicate profession i keep talking about this all the times because there are certain things that if you're working as a healthcare professional in the uk it doesn't matter whether you're in a clinical or non-clinical position there are things that you cannot do which means that you're gonna be morally upright and you're going to be um, professionally upright as well which means that you may lose your job or you may be suspended or you may be disciplined for things that are not related to your physical competence at work which means that you're going to work you're doing your job very well you may still be disciplined if you don't show the right level of emotional intelligence that is required to work in healthcare in today's video, I'm going to be telling you why a carer has been suspended for two years. So this carer obviously came from overseas working in the UK. This incident happened and the carer is now suspended for two years. And look, let me tell you this. The reason why I share some of these things is because I know that many of the people that watch my videos are either still out of the UK, wanting to move to the UK, you know, with different sectors and all of that, or already healthcare professionals, mainly in the UK. So this is something that is very valid and it's a learning point and it's more of a reflective exercise for all of us to learn from. That's what I'm going to talk about in today's video, the implications, what has happened and literally everything you need to know about this. So if you're new to my channel, obviously you're welcome. If you're a returning subscriber, I do appreciate your time. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, you want to hit that subscribe button so you're the first to be notified every single day when I drop a new video on here. Also, you know, check out my free newsletter if you're new, you don't know about it. I send information about all UK updates, important career progression opportunities, work from home jobs, as well as side business ideas that you can start in order to be independent. You know, get away from all this work brouhaha that is happening so that you can retire early, live a beautiful life and just be happy. So if you check the comment section below, you're going to see a link to my free newsletter. You only need to drop your name and email and you're part of it. Once you join that newsletter, I send you all those updates, all of that information as it becomes available. Because as you know, changes happen all the time. So what has really been going on? So basically, this carer was overpaid by 10 thousand pounds so the carer was overpaid you know which means that if they were supposed to pay the carer say i don't know one thousand pounds they ended up being paid ten thousand pounds extra and this happens on three separate occasions so it wasn't a one-off thing that the carer just opened the account and they were like oh my god you've got ten thousand pounds that's not how it happens so three different times they were paid about three thousand pounds extra than they were supposed to have been paid obviously the carer didn't declare the mistake and they went ahead to spend the money quietly and nicely obviously it's difficult to say whether they were aware or not but truth be told they didn't report it so that's what you know the case is about so what do you think about this situation i want to leave a comment in the comment section below is it fair that this carer has been punished for example for this particular thing or is it the employer's fault that they did not pay properly? Because one could argue that, yes, the carer was wrong to spend the money because legally it wasn't there. They should have reported it. Obviously, that's the right thing to do. But if someone else within the company was doing their job well, this would never have happened. And so the carer would never have been in this situation. So again, what do you think about the situation? You know, was the carer... You know, should the carer be punished or should they just be told to pay back the money? Because obviously this carer has now been suspended for two years, given a warning. And that is something that is huge. Obviously, it's got a huge impact in your career. So, you know, leave your comments in the comment section and we'll be able to talk about that and say exactly what other sorts of things have been requested from this carer and whether just what you think about it and by the case you're wondering you know my name is melvis i do work as an advanced nurse practitioner in england so i'm a nurse myself that's why you see i talk a lot about healthcare i'm very passionate about you know being a healthcare professional i have a private career coaching program where i support nurses carers midwives students student nurses prospective student nurses people that are looking for free uk visa sponsorship opportunities to move to the uk or to switch if you're already in the uk so if you check out my private coaching program in the description box below or the about section of this youtube channel then once you join you get that guidance with you know what jobs are you looking for who is recruiting how do you apply where do you apply cv reviews interview preparation literally everything that you need to know if you're already a carer and you're wanting to progress you know what i mean you can remain a carer forever i started my own journey in the uk working as a carer in a nursing home 
and then I went on to do nursing as an international student and ever since then I've progressed to the most senior clinical nursing position which is what I'm doing right now working as an advanced nurse practitioner so career progression is something that is like my bread and butter I live and breathe career progression I love the opportunities that this country brings and look we need to make the most of these opportunities. If you're in the UK or you're moving to the UK and you're just stuck in the same position, look, with all due respect for these positions, I call them entry level positions. I call them positions that are there to get you into the room, to get you into the building. But look, once you're around, you need to upgrade. You need to do more. What else is out there? That's why I'm here to guide you through that process. If you're a qualified nurse or midwife back home and you're wanting to transition back to that and you're currently working as a carer in the uk i can guide you with the nmc pathway and process but obviously you can contact the nmc directly for that information because it doesn't matter where you come through my coaching program or not all i care about is that you're upgrading you know what i mean you're earning more you're having you're just living your best life in this country and not just kind of surviving with the list that is there on offer so I'm looking forward, obviously, to seeing you in that program. If you need that tailored, personalized and individualized guidance that is on offer. So back to the carer. And by the way, if you like this content, I want you to hit that like button. It lets me know you enjoy content like this and I should do more. If you've got any recommendations, any questions, please do leave them in the comment section below. If you've got something personal and private you want to talk about, feel free to contact me through my newsletter. You're going to see all of my contacts on there and then we can take it from there. So this carer has also been asked to write a reflection. So they have asked the carer to write basically a reflection on what happened, you know what I mean, what they think they did wrong and what they would do next time. Look, reflection is something that is a huge part of healthcare. It improves our care, our practice as healthcare professionals. And it's something that it doesn't matter the profession anyway, we should all be doing on a daily basis reflecting and thinking okay this is what i did yesterday what could i have done differently is that improvement and that duty of condo as well that comes especially with healthcare you know thinking about the six c's thinking about the nursing and midwifery council you know thinking about the regulations that govern you know our practice and the moral you know conduct really that we ought to uphold as healthcare professionals so that's what this carer has been told to do obviously suspended for two years um they've also got this warning against their name because of you know vulnerable adults because if you're a carer you're working with vulnerable people you've got to be able to show good decision making but one thing that i like about this case is that this carer has been very remorseful and that's why they haven't been sacked because when things happen and you're polite about it and you come clean and say, look, I'm really sorry, this was a mistake, I didn't do the right thing, then you find that your punishment kind of is less because this carer could have been, you know, sacked and struck off, for example, or banned from healthcare. There's been other carers that have been banned completely from healthcare. So at least as you can see, you know, the carer has been really remorseful and obviously the punishment, you know, has been what I have said. So again, have you got any questions? You know, I'm going to be doing a video on the things that we should not be doing as healthcare professionals in the UK. Also, I've done lots of videos on this channel about different career progression pathways, opportunities, you know, to get into healthcare and how you can progress in your career, like I've said. So, you know what I mean? Just share this with your friends, loved ones, colleagues that they're aware so that it can help to guide us on what is expected of us, you know, as healthcare professionals, because we're dealing with human beings mainly when they're at their most vulnerable state. So it is expected that we are going to be exemplary in how we're behaving, you know what I mean? Not only at work, but even in our own private lives, because you can't be sacked for something that has happened in your private life that has nothing to do with your job. And that's why healthcare is so different from all the other professions, from all the other jobs. And that's why some people still say that healthcare is more of a vocation still than being a profession so whether you agree or not if you're coming into this sector you need to be ready you need to be empathetic you need to be compassionate you need to be honest you need to be truthful you need to be you know the best human that you can be because there's going to be no excuses when things go wrong again like i've said whether it's related to your job or not nobody will listen to that you've got to uphold the reputation of the profession at all times 24 7 whether you're at work or not at work so do you agree with what's happened you know and how 
the whole case has unfolded or do you think someone else should have done their job well and this would never have happened obviously whatever the case you know what i mean so like i've said make sure you join my newsletter if you need that tailored individualized and personalized guidance consider joining my private coaching program which you're going to find the link in the about section of this youtube channel or the description box below and then we can get started but my newsletter is completely free i send that info to you as it does become available so that you don't miss out and again do watch this other video that i've done because it's going to be really really helpful for you and to guide you with that journey to success here in this beautiful country the uk you know thank you for watching till now and i'll see you in the next video